Welcome to the ninth program of Monday Markers with Charlie. And today's uh, topic is the founding of the American Federation of Labor in 1881. The longest lived labor federation in the United States history was founded in Pittsburgh in 1881 as the Federation of Organized Trades and Labor Unions but its name was changed uh, in 1886 to the American Federation of Labor. The founding convention was held in Turner's Hall, which was where the William Penn Hotel is now that Henry Clay Frick built. The historical marker dedicated in 1997 is a short block away on 6th Avenue beside Mellon Square. The AFL was founded following the Great Railroad Strike of 1877 and the enormous upsurge of labor in the 1880s around the demand for the eight-hour day. The meeting of the Federation was an attempt to unite two different philosophies of labor organization. On one hand were the craft-based uh, organizations of skilled trades focused on training and the control of specific types of work in a given area. On the other hand, were the Knights of Labor, who had a broad-based philosophy of social and political change rooted in cooperation and education. The skilled trades were intensely involved in local politics and focused on jurisdiction over existing work for the benefit of their members. The Knights were much less deeply rooted, but much broader in their ambitions to create a better world for all working people. What united these two visions of unionism was largely the figure of the charismatic founder of the United Brotherhood of Carpenters, Peter J. McGuire. Born in New York City to a poor Irish Catholic family, he went to work at the age of 11 when his father went to fight in the Union Army. Attending free night classes at Cooper Union, he met Samuel Gompers, who later became the head of the Cigar Makers Union and then president of the American Federation of Labor. McGuire was a radical socialist active in the International Working Men's Association, who with Gompers and others organized a protest meeting against unemployment in 1877 in New York's Tompkins Square Park that was brutally attacked by police. McGuire organized the Carpenters Union in St. Louis. In 1881, he called for a national meeting of carpenters in Chicago and he was there elected General Secretary of the Union. That year, he called for the Federation, a Federation of Organized Trades Convention in Pittsburgh. The convention's militant call to action declared, whereas a struggle is going on in the nations of the civilized world between oppressors and the oppressed of all countries, a struggle between capital and labor, which must grow in intensity from year to year and work disastrous results to all toiling members of all nations, if not combined for mutual protection and benefit. A black Pittsburgh delegate at that convention, Jeremiah Grandison, spoke to the founding convention. He issued a warning to craft unions that discriminated by race and ethnicity. We have in the city of Pittsburgh many men in our organization who have no particular trade but should not be excluded from our federation. Our object, as I understand it, is to federate the whole laboring element of America. I speak most particularly with a knowledge of my own people and I declare to you that it would be dangerous to skilled mechanics to exclude from this organization the common laborer. 
who might in an emergency be employed in positions that they could readily qualify themselves to fill. In 1882, McGuire moved the Carpenters to New York City in early September. The idea spread widely in Pittsburgh, held its first Labor Day parade within a year or so. National agitation on behalf of the eight-hour day reached its peak in the 1880s. Eight hours for work, eight hours for rest, and eight hours for what we will was the cry. McGuire, deeply frustrated by the inaction and half measures of politicians, introduced another proposal to the Labor Federation in 1884. We want an enactment by working men themselves that on a given day, May 1st, 1886, eight hours shall constitute a day's work and they ought to enforce it themselves. On May Day, 1886, 350,000 workers struck more than 11,000 workplaces. However, at a labor rally in Haymarket Square in Chicago, a bomb was thrown at police and the resulting repression of unions, socialists, and anarchists was severe. The hanging of the supposed leaders of the Chicago movement though none had been present when the bomb was thrown, led to worldwide protests uh, among socialists, communists, anarchists, as well as a broad range of trade unionists that led, that became celebrated as International Workers' Day, May Day. In reaction, largely, to the growing popularity of May Day, Labor Day, was made a national holiday in the United States in 1894. So while the AFL's skill and craft-based organizational model has endured to its credit, its failure to organize mass production industries led to the founding of the Congress of Industrial Organizations in 1937 in Pittsburgh. However, the dream of the Knights of Labor of a cooperative commonwealth based on education and solidarity is needed today in a time of social, political, and economic crisis more than ever. Music